How many times we go through trials? You go through hardships. It could be financial, it could be personal. Whatever type of problem, we go through problems, but we question the wisdom of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Oh Allah, why did you do this to me? Oh Allah, why did you choose me to go through this trial? My family is alright, everybody in my neighborhood is okay. Why me? Why do we question the wisdoms of Allah? One point of our lives, for some reason that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala knows about, we will be in a difficult situation. And the only way out is to return to your Creator, to take you out of that situation. You know, it could be because someone accused you falsely. It could be because you are about to lose your loved ones. It could be because you, you were afflicted with illness and sickness. It could be because of anything. But have you ever reflect on this? Have you ever said to yourself, what could put me in that situation? What could be? One of three reasons. One of three reasons. One, that you are Oh, completely oblivious, completely, you know, heedless about the remembrance about Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the dhikr of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. You're not there. You're so much, you're so busy with your daily life. You're so concerned about other people. Allah is no longer part of your life. And then your heart becomes cold hard as a rock for those individuals for those people to turn away from Allah from the deen of Allah from Akhirah and they were concerned about money and its status and degrees on the wall and vehicles and houses and you know what the, 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 the beauty of this life that individual, that person will live life of a depressed life. Why? Because the life of that person would be so difficult. And we will resurrect that person on the day of Yom Al Qiyamah blind. And the person was saying, Oh my Lord, why did you resurrect me blind? I used to be able to see. I used to be able to see all these women walking in front of me. I used to be able to see when I'm cheating people. I used to be able to see when I'm doing haram. Why am I blind today? Thus, our ayat, our signs was presented to you. And thus today you will be forgotten. The second reason, ya ikhwati fillah, and I know we do this all the time, is al amru bil ma'roof wa nahyu an al munkar. But do you know that you're responsible of every Muslim around you? That you saw an evil taking place, but you did not bother to say to that person, fear Allah? You did not say that. I did not say this. We did not say it. When you saw someone doing haram right in front of your eyes, we did not move. We did not care. We didn't. There was a time when the ulama and the da'is and the people of the salaf, when someone comes to them and says, Ya akhi, ittaqi la fi Allah. Their eyes were not able to hold tears. But how many times someone said to us, Ittaqillah, or we heard the word Ittaqillah, and nothing was moved. How many times? You know why? Because everything is right here and nothing is here. 
We want to enjoy ourselves. We want to have fun. We want to say, I really had a good time. That sheikh was funny. That sheikh was amazing. What did you learn? For how much of that would you implement? None of that. We lived our lives as though, you know, this is my life. Alhamdulillah, your wife is wearing hijab. Your daughters, mashallah, they're learning Quran. Your son is going to the masjid. I don't care about him. And you forgot that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, Kuntum khayra ummatin ukhrijat linnas. For what? Why? Ta'muruna bil ma'roof. Wa tanhawna anil munkar. Wa tu'minuna billah. For three things. Not because you look the best, not because you're the strongest, wealthiest, brightest, you know, no. Al Amru bil Ma'roof wa Nahya Anil Munkar. When you do this, then Allah said, Wa tu minuna billah. The third point, Ikhwati Fillah. For you working on your ibadah. You need to reflect. You need to ask yourself and say, you know, when was the last time that I prayed for Qiyam al -Layl? One of the Salaf Rahimahullah, he said, I had a donkey. And the purpose of this donkey was to rent it to the people. For the people to pay me to transport them from one point to another. And a man came to me. Can you take me from this point to, the, uh, to, the, to that point? I said, I will take you. The man said to me, he said, I know a road that can take me where I want. It's a shortcut. Let us take this road. But I'm not familiar with that. He said, don't worry, I'll take care of it. I know the area very well. I can take you where I want to go and it's a shortcut and it's for you to come back earlier for your business, for your next trip. I listened to him. I trusted him. He looked decent. He's a normal man. He said, I walked and we walked and we walked and finally we came to a dead end. And the man, he drew his sword and he pointed at me. I said to the man, you know, out of fear, I panicked. The donkey is yours and the wealth is yours. Let me go back to my family, to my children. <laughs> For you to expose me so I won't do this to anyone else, I won't let you go. I will kill you. I will take your donkey. I will take your money and I will kill you. I need to bury the secret right here. If this is what you want to do, allow me to pray to Raka. He laughed. You know, you want to pray? You know, do it fast. He said, so I said, Allahu Akbar. I'm standing. I want to read the Quran. I want to communicate to my Lord. This is a moment of truth. This is the time that I need to connect with my Lord. This is the time that I need His help. This is the time that I need to talk to Him. He said, but there is no Quran in my heart. I can't remember anything. And he says, Subhanallah. And the man, he said, finish your prayer. Why are you standing there? I remember the word, the ayah from the Quran when Allah and who will respond to the stress to the person when he's in need of it, in need of Allah and in state of stress. Who else will respond? He said, "For oh Wallahi." He said, "I finished the salah and all I said was this ayah. I had nothing else." And when I finished my salah and I submitted myself and I was ready to die, a man on his horse just approached us. He has a sphere. He said that he threw that sphere and wallah, he did not miss his heart. And I said, you know, 
out of happiness and joy. And the killer is on the ground and this man is approaching me on his horse. And I said, who are you? May Allah have mercy on you. He said, I am the messenger of your Lord. I am the messenger of the one that you call upon when in a state of stress. Allah has sent was an angel appointed by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to save that person because the person was in the state of stress. There was a Muslim, his name is Hassan. In his 20s, he went through a very hard time. He had some symptoms that interrupted his life, disrupted his whole profession. Every aspect of his life was in turmoil because of that trial. He went to doctors, physicians, to his GP, tried to find out, tried to investigate what was going on in his life. He had so many pains, he couldn't sleep well, there were problems even with his wife, with his children, with everybody. So he was truly in trouble. And one day he decided to go and see one of the scholars who still live today as well. He went to him and he realized that he was the victim of black magic that has turned his life in, into hell. And that scholar was generous enough to give him of his time and he made ruqya for him, exorcism, until with the permission of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala he was cured. Now apparently this Hassan was going through a trial and he himself admits that through that trial he questioned the purpose for him going through that hardship. He questioned the wisdom of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Why do we question the decree of Allah and what happens with us? Let's go back to Hassan and find out. After being cured of this, Hassan had a very humble job. And that job didn't pay off like big time. He didn't get big good wages. But it was enough to survive and keep his family well. But after that, he realized, he, after, after being cured from that, he started to question himself. He questioned the very meaning of his existence in this world. And he realized that after going through this trial, he has learned so much about black magic and about the trials and the hardship the person goes through that he was now qualified to help other people in similar situations. And guess what? For the last 20 years of his life, Allah has cured thousands of people through Hassan without taking a penny for what he does. What was that process that Hassan went through? Millions of people have gone through the same process. It's the wisdom of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. These are gifts from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Consider the life of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa himself. In Mecca, 13 years he's calling the people to Islam, saying to them, I am showing you the way, guiding you to the way leading to eternal happiness, to the pleasure of Allah, to paradise. That's what, what every human being has in his own heart as an intrinsic talent to search eternal happiness, to search the pleasure of Allah, to search the ultimate state of resourcefulness has been put in the heart, in the heart of every human being. Yet what was the response? He was challenged. He was persecuted. His companions were tortured, were killed in front of his eyes. And he couldn't do anything. What was the outcome? The best nation ever brought forth to mankind. History was written with actions of the companions of the Prophet ﷺ who went through these very trials. The best of humanity are my generation. He sends trials your way. Why? To transform you. So that you become a better person. But indeed, with every hardship, there is ease. That's the ease. The ease is within the hardship itself, but it manifests itself best when the hardship is over and you find yourself to be a totally different person on a higher level of faith, a higher level of conduct, a higher level of achievement in every aspect of your life. But when we are in the trial, what happens? Our intellect, our understanding contracts. We start to question the wisdom of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. But bear in mind 
whenever a trouble comes your way, consider that to be a gift from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and you have been unable to grow up to a higher level and Allah has given you the opportunity now. The Prophet says, and this is the wisdom behind this hadith, the Messenger says, a person will be tried with hardship, with challenges, trials, according to the level of his iman, according to the level of his faith and his being. The people who receive the most or the hardest trials are the prophets, then the ones nearby in iman, and so on and so forth. A person will be tried according to the level of their faith. Why? If Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala loves the prophets most, and the righteous ones most, according to the level of your iman, of your taqwa, Allah loves you. So why does Allah send more trouble? Because trial is good. Ultimately, there is so much wisdom and benefit in trials. But the thing is that most of us are short-sighted not to notice that. So this is why you will be tried in accordance to your iman. So that it's a, it's a, it's a balance between two extremes. Because if the hardship is so tough for you, you might just denounce Islam and keep away from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And if it's too easy, it will not push you to a higher level. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has wisdom even with the degree to which He tests you. The trial has been tailored for you according to your faith. So look at it favorably that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has the wisdom behind that. But by the way, if you don't maintain this mentality or this outlook on trial, what will happen? The trial will turn out to be punishment for you. And you will miss all the advantages of that. Who says that? The Prophet ﷺ. He makes it clear when he says in the hadith, which he actually narrates from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, a hadith Qudusi, a divine hadith. Wallahi, by this hadith you can live your life without trouble, with, with, with internal peace that can never be disrupted. I am to my servant as he thinks about me. So when the trial comes your way, what, what are the thoughts that you have to have about Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? If you maintain good thoughts that are in accordance with the names and attributes of Allah, and this is why if you want to attain this high level, you need to learn the names and attributes of Allah, that He is the most wise, He is the omnipotent, His knowledge encompasses everything. There's no value learning these without applying them in our lives. So when you know that Allah is the most wise, the trial comes your way, you know that everything happens by the permission of Allah. It happens by the permission of Allah and Allah is wise. It must be good for me. I'll trust Allah and I'll march forward and I see what opportunity Allah has put in my way through this trial. I'll see through it. When Allah tests you, Allah wants you to grow higher. The Prophet ﷺ makes it clear in a very beautiful hadith. He says that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sometimes has a high level of reward in Jannah for a person. Allah has dedicated or has allocated a high rank for a person in Jannah. And the person is so complacent that he doesn't do actions, he doesn't do righteousness, he doesn't contribute to qualify to that rank. So what does Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala do? So Allah tries him in order to scrape off his sins. So he grows to qualify for that rank. So maintain that notion as you go through trials. The Messenger kept his, his hopes high even at the most difficult times. But in order to grow, we have to go through, through these trials. That, that's human nature. And this is why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sends a wake-up call for us when He sends trials our way. So if we maintain that, and we maintain the connection with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, maintain that trust in Allah, all this hardship that's happening today, will turn into a blessing in disguise. And that's the reality of it. It's just a matter of you realizing it or failing to do that. Now I'll share with you some of the benefits, the clear benefits of going through trials. In your personal life, in your professional life, uh, financially, whatever you go through, even if it's a medical condition, just try to figure out what this would add to you. Imam Shafi'i understood that very well. Because one day he was asked by a person, which is better for a person? To be empowered, to be given strength, dominance and maturity, or to go through trials? He was surprised by the question. He said, no one will be empowered without going through trials. 
Imam Ahmad was one of the scholars of the time. When he went through the trial of the claim that the Quran was created, he stood out. He said, no. They said, you are under torture. You have the excuse to agree. Just, you just save yourself. He said, no. And one day they brought him out. And they said, you just save yourself. They brought scholars, his friends. They told him, Allah has excused you. Why do you put yourself under so much pressure? You're about to die. You're about to be killed. They brought a paper for him and a pen to write and make the declaration that the Quran was created, which is a statement of disbelief. And they gathered the people, thousands of people, in one place. And when he looked and he saw all these people, he reclined. And he said a very beautiful statement. He said, I'd rather die than send these people astray. It was hardship. And he stood out until today. When we talk about Ahlul Sunnah, the people, the true followers of the Prophet ﷺ, who hold them to the Sunnah of the Messenger of Allah, we say, who is the Imam? That's his name, that's his title. Imam Ahmad, Imam Ahlul Sunnah wal Jama'ah, until today. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, through trials, He raises your rank in faith and Iman, and He forgives your sins. So this is one of the wisdoms. And this is why the Prophet ﷺ said that according to to the, to the level of your iman, you will be tried. Allah will remove your sins by that. The Messenger ﷺ also said in the end of, at the end of this hadith, that trial will keep hitting the person, hitting the Muslim, until he walks on earth free of sin. Because the nature of this world, there is no absolute goodness, there is no absolute evil. You can never attain happiness in this world. Ultimate happiness, constant happiness, absolute happiness. Because that, that's not the world for happiness. And there's no ultimate misery in this world. It's a mixture of both. But Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala kept purity for the hereafter. So there will be ultimate happiness in paradise and ultimate misery and abyss in the hellfire. Do you think you will be led to enter paradise when the trials that came to the people before you have not come to you yet? In Surah Al-Ankabut, Allah makes it clear. He says, do you think people will be left alone to say, we have believed when they have not been tested yet? We have tested, tested the people who came before them. And Allah shall make clear the true believers and shall make clear those who are liars.